You may have heard of it, far-right and conservative parties from 16 EU countries, including France's Rassemblement National, Poland's Peace, Hungary's Fidesz and Italy's Lega, have decided to join forces to make their voice heard in the European debates. Together, they signed a document calling for deep reform of the EU, paving the way for what some are predicting to become a new political group in the European Parliament. But what does it mean to belong to a group? And what would be the political implication of such a move? Today, your active takes a closer look. Among the 705 MEPs that sit in the Parliament, 29 are currently non-attached members. The remaining 676 belong to what we call a group. At the moment, there are seven, covering the entire political spectrum from left to right. These formations are not organized by nationality, but by political affiliation. They promote a common ideology and try to achieve particular objectives in the European legislative train through the coordination of their members who belong to different committees. Groups can be set up at any stage during a five-year parliamentary mandate, as long as they observe the following conditions. They must have at least 23 MEPs elected in at least one quarter of the member state, that is to say seven countries. Their members can belong to any other political group. They must notify the president of the parliament in a statement that specifies the group's name, its members and its leadership. And that's it. After that, every group gets to decide on its own internal organization. Obviously, the bigger the group, the greater the political weight, but they also translate in very practical gains. Every group's chair gets to sit and vote in the Conference of Presidents, which is the governing body of the European Parliament responsible for the organization of the debate, the administrative matters and the agenda. It also means decisive positions in the many committees of the European Parliament, as the rule of procedures provide that its diversity must be reflected in the composition of the bureau of each committee. That's in theory though, in reality, there is a cordon sanitaire. The phrase cordon sanitaire is a term that originally used to refer to territorial lockdowns meant to stop infectious disease, and it comes from the Belgian politics in the 19th, when Flemish political parties teamed up to make sure the far-right parties would be excluded from the governing majority. Nowadays, it translates into the Identity and Democracy Group, which gathers Rassemblement National, Lega, and Alternative for Dutchland, not sharing of having vice chairs in any committee despite representing almost 11% in the plenary. For the sake of comparison, the Greens, who represent only 9% of the MEPs, boast 12 positions, including three as committee chairs. Something might be changing though. Fidesz, the party of Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, recently left the European People's Party the largest and most influential political group of the European Parliament. They left just before being kicked out, in fact. Still, Fidesz's exit from the EPP triggered a chain reaction as right and extreme right parties are repositioning themselves. Without a group, Fidesz is marginalized from European politics. However, Orban has no interest in joining an established EU party where it would merely be a junior partner given the relatively small number of Hungarian MEPs. Orban is therefore trying to create a new political family that gathers all right-wing forces in Europe where he could claim ideological leadership, even though Fidesz itself would probably be too small to take the actual helm. At the same time, far-right parties across Europe are searching for political legitimacy to break the cordon sanitaire that marginalizes them in Brussels and at home which explains the large participation in the joint declaration signed earlier this month by right-wing parties from 16 EU countries. National politics would be the short answer. Take Marine Le Pen, for example. The nationalist right in Europe is usually defined by where her party, Rassemblement National, stands. Ahead of the 2022 presidential elections, the signing of the declaration may allow Le Pen to recalibrate her position vis-à-vis -vis the EU. During the 2017 elections, Marine Le Pen campaigned for exiting from the Euro and a total renegotiation of the European treaties. Since then, she has not been very audible on the substance, even if the European Union has been a recurring and easy target on which to put the blame on many topics – migration, vaccines, you name it. 
For Le Pen, the declaration is the first move towards a European alliance of nations, a way out from the bureaucratic ideology Brussels is trying to impose, putting the will of the European peoples back at the center of the political stage. This move might be risky though. For years, Rassemblement National has tried to get rid of its extremist stigma. Le Pen prefers to define her political orientation as sovereignist than far right. Joining forces with other parties may reassure some voters that a Le Penist France would not be isolated in Europe, but some of these parties are far from cautious in expressing an extremist position. Things might be even more complicated in Italy. The race between Giorgia Meloni, leader of Fratelli d'Italia, and Matteo Salvini, Lega Nord, is a microcosm of the competition internal to the right-wing arena. Current national polls estimate both parties as the most represented in vote intentions, but who will end up on top remains to be seen. Following the departure of the UK Tories, Fratelli d'Italia skillfully managed to take over the European Conservatives and Reformist group. The ECR tries to present itself as a Euro-realist voice to the right of the EPP. As a result, it is not completely excluded from the distribution of roles in the European Parliament. Meloni has therefore no interest in dissolving the ECR group. She would at best expand it to parties that would not compromise its more moderate perception. Salvini, on the other hand, is currently in the Identity and Democracy group, with Rassemblement National and Alternative for Deutschland. He has been trying to break out of the cordon sanitaire by creating a new group that would include, other than Hungary's Fidesz, the Polish ruling party Law and Justice, which is currently part of the ECR group. Still, it might not be enough to break out of political isolation if all other parties continue to gang up. Perhaps the only way for these parties to play a decisive role in EU politics is if one of them takes over the government of a large member state. National politics, once again, seems to take precedence.